my body is like tingling and I'm just, I'm raising my hands and I'm crying. And I was like, what is happening? I think people look down upon us a lot of the ways for being mixed and having immigrant parents and not being super wealthy. And we dressed weird and we were homeschooled and we didn't talk like people because my parents, like I said, weren't American. And I knew it was the Lord being like, go forward because you have been carrying this thing for way too long. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. Happy Tuesday. If you are listening on a Tuesday, that is, we drop these every single Tuesday. So Tuesdays just got better, baby. And I hope you guys are having a good day. If you're not listening on a Tuesday, I am filming on a Wednesday. I live in Dallas, if you don't know, and actually Dallas got shut down the whole city pretty much because of an ice storm. So it's day two of that. Literally, the roads are undrivable, ice everywhere. I mean, even my sidewalk, like can't even walk on my sidewalk because it is so icy. So it's actually been kind of fun. I've like lit my fireplace. I've just been cleaning, getting stuff done, been filming podcasts, been planning for the week. And I don't know when you'll be listening to this. Actually, I think you'll be listening to this next week. When you are listening to this, I will actually be in South Africa, which is so, so amazing. I mean, of course, Lord willing that all the flights go according to plan. One of my best friends is getting married in South Africa. So I'll actually be there as you guys are listening to this. So make sure you're following my Instagram for any of those like fun updates and stuff. And another one of my best friends, I got back from San Diego Sunday night. Another one of my best friends just got married as well. So three of my best friends have got married within the, within a six month time span, which is, it's a lot to travel for weddings, but it's also like the most exciting thing. And if you guys are following, I did a whole post on what happens basically like when your friend gets the thing that you want go check that out. It's a picture of me wearing a bridesmaid's dress. And I plan on doing a whole nother like podcast on that because it seems to be a topic a lot of people struggle with. I mean, based off of reading those, the comments, a lot of people seem to struggle with that. So you can go read that caption and then I'll definitely try to do a podcast just with talking about singleness and marriage and like wanting marriage and your friend getting it and you're not and all my thoughts on that. So if anyone gets it, I do, but have no fear. I will have a podcast coming soon to help you and just try to spur you on in your faith in the process. Another thing though, before we get into today's episode, which I'm a little bit nervous for, but also very excited. I wanna let you guys know that if you are a monthly supporter, that now the proceeds, 10% of the proceeds now go to charity. So we're gonna pick a charity, I think every other month or every once every quarter, so every three months, and we will donate the proceeds to that. So for today's charity, we are actually donating to a charity in Guatemala that feeds malnourished children. I went, I picked it through globallife.org or globalliving.org. It's a website that has a ton of charities on there. And I picked one on there and my mom's from Guatemala. So I thought it was really cool to kind of get to give back from my own mom's country. But if you ever have any charities, let me know. I will definitely try to pick some throughout each quarter. And that also just hopes, hopefully encourages you guys to know if you are a monthly supporter that your funds are going to paying for the team that is running this podcast as well as charity. So if you guys do want to give, the link is always down below. Absolutely no pressure. But just so you guys know that Happy and Healthy is happy to give back. And it's a goal of mine is to always try to give back. So just want to let you guys know that it's really exciting. For today's episode, I am a little nervous, but also very excited. On my Instagram, I, which this was such a random idea, but on my Instagram, I basically said, Hey, if you guys were to sit down with me on my couch, what would you want to talk about? And a lot of the comments were actually, I want to hear your story. I want to know how you met Jesus. What's your story of coming to faith? What did you struggle with? Like basically what is my story up and up until this point? And I'm going to be honest, I filmed this once before and it was way too long, kind of all over the place. I cried which is sweet. I'm thankful that I cried because it was a very vulnerable moment of just sharing the way that God changed my life. But also just some things that I was just like, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I need to say that. So I'm actually redoing this and I just wanted to make it a little bit more refined. Um, I have a lot more energy today as well. And in the first one I filmed, my voice was completely gone from the wedding I was at. And so I have my energy drink. I'm in a better refreshed mood and I feel like I'm in a better place to just really open up about this. Now, the thing with sharing testimonies are, the thing is it's very vulnerable and it's a very intimidating thing to do because you are subjecting yourself to potentially criticism, misunderstandings, 
uh, just being vulnerable and letting people judge you. And I think that's always why it's been a little bit scary to share it. I've shared my story in sporadic moments throughout my podcast. I've shared past addictions, relationships, uh, you know, struggles that I've had, but I've never shared it. And I guess you could say like a linear format because I've always been scared to you for some reason. There's things in my story that are difficult. Not everything I will be sharing, to be honest. I just want to be open and honest about that. I will be touching about that. But some of those things I actually want to share later down the road. And I plan on opening up about them. But I don't want to share everything all in this one podcast. For the most part, you will be hearing everything. Um, but I want to be able to share my real story in a different format down the road. So just stay tuned for that. But... I just think testimonies are extremely powerful. The Bible says, I believe in Revelations 12 too, that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. And so basically meaning that we first overcome the things that we struggle with first by the blood of the lamb. And then we can overcome and help other people overcome with our testimonies once we are healed. Because when you're free, you go free other people, free people, free other people. And, and so, excuse me, that is my intention with today's podcast is to, hopefully help someone out there that's struggling. That is like, I feel alone or I'm struggling with this. Does anyone else struggle with this? And this podcast is hopefully just to help you feel less alone, to help you feel seen, to help you feel like you're not crazy, but also to show you that with God, all things are possible. If I can overcome these things, so can you. And I genuinely believe that without Christ in my life, I would not be able to be a victor over these things. I would not have been able to overcome these things because I would still be struggling and striving in my own strength. And when God came in and, and people and confession and accountability and mentors and people praying for me, all those in conjunction truly helped me find freedom. And so I'm in a very good place in my life. Of course, I still struggle with many different things, but the main things of like struggling with severe sins or addictions or secrets or just like unhealthy relationships, I think those are in the past, thank God. And so just to show you that you're not alone and I'm hoping that my story can help someone out there today. And I just know that the enemy wants us to shut our mouths. The enemy does not want us to share our stories because he knows there's power in a testimony and he knows that our testimonies have the ability to set other people free. So I know that this is scary and I do feel nervous to do this, but also I'm so ready because the more you share your story, the less power it has over you. And so that's like the purpose of this. So my only thing is that when you were listening to my story, be open-minded, be uh, tender, be willing to listen and to not judge somebody because you never know someone's story. You may look at them and be like, oh, they have it all together or whatever. They don't struggle with anything or you know, they're trying to be victim mentality, whatever. Like I'm not here to be like, woe is me, pity is me, victim, victim mentality, simply here to share my story. The things that I overcame, this is my story. This is my testimony. You may not understand or, or get it, or you may think it's not true, whatever, but I know that I'm being honest. And I know that this is a personal story that I don't have to share, but I'm willing to share because I believe that there is going to be power in me sharing my story. So all I ask is you be open-minded, non-judgmental and kind and gracious and just be willing to listen. And I pray and believe that God will use the story, whether it's now or in 10 years, I just pray that God will use my story for someone else's freedom. So here we go. Welcome to my story and my testimony. Okay, so I'm gonna take one more sip of my energy drink before we get into this. Today I'm drinking Alani New. I've cut out drinking Celsius for the most part. It's just been recalled too many times and there's so many people saying bad things about it and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want that in my body. But I mean, is Alani New any better? To be honest, I don't know. But it doesn't make me feel the way that um, Celsius does. So it sucks because I was a diehard Celsius fan. But after I'm seeing all these like recalls on it and people like making claw claw what's the word <laughs> class action lawsuits that's not not claw I guess that could be you know a condensed version of the word I got a little nervous and I was like eh, I don't know about that also something that I want to say really quickly before we get into my story I'm a little bummed out about it I ordered a neon sign and I was hanging it up and I was I was hanging it up something malfunctioned and it's not working so today's episode should have had the neon sign in it and it just didn't work so Hopefully next episode we'll have that and you guys can see the new background. Anyway, okay, let's get into my story. So my name is Janine Amapola, Janine Gabrielle Amapola. 
And I'm 28 years old and I live in Dallas, Texas. And I grew up in Dallas, Texas, born and raised here. My parents are actually from two different countries. So I was born in America and my parents were not. My mom is from Guatemala and my dad is from Germany. They were both actually from those countries. My dad met my mom in Guatemala. They got married after six months. Love at first sight. Completely two different cultures. Spoke two different languages. I mean, I really want them to share their story because it's insane. And so God ordained, like it literally was a love at first sight. And then they got married and then became Christians and got remarried. And so they moved to the States, not ever expecting that they would have kids in America. They were actually planning on moving back to Germany per pre finding Jesus in their life. And then once they became Christians, they felt like God was calling them to stay in Dallas. So my mom got pregnant with my oldest brother, Josh, and ended up having seven kids. Pretty crazy. I know seven kids. So I'm one of seven kids. I'm the youngest of seven kids. My mom actually almost died several times and I was actually supposed to not be born. I was having a birth defect there. I think my umbil the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck and they went to the doctor and the doctor told my mom to, you know, basically unalive me or remove me, I guess you could say. And my parents were like, nope. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed, came back to the doctor and what do you know? <laughs> it was removed. Like the umbilical cord was shifted and God did a miracle. And I came out somewhat normal. I'm just kidding. But I was good and I was healthy. Thank you, Lord. So anyway, um, oh, my sister's calling me. Speak of the devil. Hold on. Let me answer it and she can say hi to the podcast. Oh, I actually just hung up on her. Well, she'll be fine. Actually, let me see what she has to say. Hold on. Let's see. This is my sister, Dean. Janine. Hi, Deanie. What's up? Uh, can you talk real fast? Is something wrong? Um, not wrong. I just want to ask you something. Uh, I'm in the middle of filming a podcast. Do you want me to pause for a second? Yeah, real quick. I just want to quickly ask you something. Okay, hold on. Podcast BRB. <laughs> All right, we are back. Sorry about that, y'all. I um had to help my sister out with some some advice. <laughs> anyway, okay. So going back, basically, I was raised homeschooled and raised in a large family. So I had six older siblings and my sister Dean that just called me, she is the third, no third child. There's two boys in the family, five girls. There's, it goes boy, it goes Josh, Celestine, Adine, Emmanuel, Angela, Vanya, Janine. So I'm the youngest and we grew up homeschooled, grew up, um, not, you know, the wealthiest family. So that definitely played a role into my life and the way I was growing up, growing up and just insecurities around that, being around a lot of people that seem to have more money than us. We were raised in a Christian home. So my parents weren't believers, like I said, when they met each other. And then when they became Christians, they remarried again and raised all of us to know the word, to love God, to listen, worship music. I mean, my parents always tried to instill truth inside of us. And so I'm really thankful for that because the Bible would just talk about raising up your children in the ways of the word or essentially the ways that, of God and how that won't leave a child. They won't depart from it. And that's so true because I've come to see in my own life, as you guys will hear, amidst all the trials and the things I went through in the dumb decisions. I always knew what was right and wrong. And I always knew the Lord was calling me back because I genuinely believe that my parents instilled so much into us. They would pray for pray over us every single night and just constantly have the worship playing. My dad would read a scripture. And so I'm really, really thankful for that. Growing up, like I said, we were like home homeschooled, like my siblings were my best friends and my neighbors. So probably, which is why I'm a little bit socially awkward, maybe at times, which I don't think I totally am, but you might see that at a couple of times where you're like, wow, she's kind of dorky. That's probably why. So most of growing up, we would go to church every single Sunday and I didn't really understand it, you know, went and listened to the sermons, went to the youth group, went to the middle school services, whatever. Nothing really stuck with me, even though like, cool, I enjoyed it, but I didn't find very, very many friends there. No one really talked to my siblings and I. We seemed to be the only family that was very different in comparison to the people at my church and my neighborhood. And so I think people look down upon us a lot of the ways for being mixed and having immigrant parents and not being super wealthy. And we dressed weird and we were homeschooled and we didn't talk like people because my parents, like I said, weren't American. And so a lot of times when I would speak to people, they would be like, why do you talk like that? Or they would be like, why did you say that word? Or you're pronouncing that wrong. And I honestly had no idea until people would call us out on it. And so didn't have very many friends growing up. And I definitely feel like 
I had a lot of identity issues from a very young age, which I think most people do. I think that's the number one way that the enemy attacks us is within our identity because the enemy knows how foundational and staple and important our identity is. So growing up mixed race and growing up in America, I never really knew which culture to associate to because part of it was like, okay, I'm not fully Guatemalan. I don't speak the language. I don't you know, dress and act a certain way that people would deem as being fully Guatemalan. I'm not fully, I don't look German, even though, yeah, my name and all the things and like the way what we ate and what we listened to were, you know, in association to our cultures, what we ate and what the languages we heard growing up. But then growing up in America with my parents that basically didn't have American culture at all. And then me being mixed in American culture, it was very confusing because I never really knew where to fit in. I was like, okay, I'm in America. I want to be American. I want to act and look and dress and do whatever it looks like to be American. But I didn't know how, and neither did we have the resources and the funds to do it. And my parents didn't almost want me acting like that because I do think there was a very negative stigma around the word being American because my parents thought that was maybe being superficial or materialistic. And I think that is still somewhat of America, but that was what my parents didn't want me to be. And so I understand that my parents don't hate America. They love America, but they didn't want me to act like a stereotypical American that only just like wasted my money and, and, you know, wanted to look a certain way to, you know what I mean? So I'm trying not to harbor too much on that. So I definitely think that caused a lot of identity issues of me being around predominantly white schools and white children and white people at my church and me being like, okay, where do I fit in? You know, as I'm not fully white and I don't really know where I belong. And I don't think that people fully accepted me, especially growing up because I didn't look like them. I didn't dress like them and act like them. And I didn't know how to do that, you know? So definitely had a lot of identity issues from the very early age where I remember just being like, all I want to do is fit in. I just want to be liked. I want people to notice me. I don't want to be an outcast. I don't want to dress differently. So I think I started looking around at people early on being like, how can I look like them? How can I fit in like them? High school rolls around and my mom, actually seventh grade rolls around. My mom realized that my siblings and I needed a better education. She, you know, taught us and did all the things in middle school. And then at a certain point, my mom was like, okay, we need something more for the kids. So she found this school called, a, it's like a co-op and it's where you go twice a week. It's like a school for homeschoolers. Parents teach you, other certified people can teach you. You go twice a week, you go to these classrooms. It's literally like a normal school. You just go twice a week and there's more free time. So you can play sports. And so I did cheerleading or actually, no, I didn't do cheerleading yet. I did dance growing up and a lot of kids are from the Metroplex of Dallas. So there's people from all over Plano, Allen, Frisco, Richardson, Dallas. They all go to this one school. And so I started becoming more social and learning social skills and going to the school. And I was all of a sudden like exposed to like dating and people that weren't like me, even though everyone thinks that like homeschoolers are weird. Like people were very normal, like very, very normal, it's very normal families. And so I was like, okay, like I was watching these kids and I was like, okay, this is how you dress. This is how you talk. This is how you get, how you fit in. I was just very shy and very awkward at times. And so I started going there consistently and I'm really, really glad because in this homeschool co-op, they still had prom, homecoming, sports. Everyone was just, it was just very normal. And so high school, I was still a very good kid for the most part. Still went to church all the time, still tried to read my Bible, but I didn't really know how to like consistently walk with the Lord. I didn't really read my Bible as much, even though I'd read it. I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm kind of bored. I don't really want this. I knew that you were supposed to read, but I just didn't know how. And so at this time, you know, I'm listening to certain music that I probably shouldn't have been listening to from a very young age. I've always loved like R and B and rap. So like I was listening to like take care album by Drake back in the day or Usher or Tyga or I don't know, like Ty Dolla Sign, like that was more college era, but I loved me some good rap in like R and B, which I noticed played a really big part into my story later on, because I genuinely believe what you input is what you output. So the things that you were inputting into your life, music, movies, books, media, whatever, they will manifest in your life in some shape or form, whether you like to admit it or not. And so I would notice that I would listen to this music and I would be like, I want a boyfriend and I want to be more sexual because that's what I was listening to all the time. And I was listening to cuss words and it just wasn't good. So that was like my hang up was like listening to this music. 
And uh, in high school, like I said, I was still trying to walk with the Lord. I was still a pretty good kid. Like I really, really was, but I just didn't know how to like genuinely walk with the Lord. So I still knew from right or wrong. And so I started dating my high school boyfriend. He was the quarterback. I became the high school cheerleading captain, which was so cliche. We dated for a very long time and everyone deemed us as like the it couple. It was kind of weird, but it was like, we were like the it couple homeschool edition. (laughs) It's kind of weird if you put it that way. But um, we started dating and that was my first boyfriend. I started learning about love and relationships and how to be in a relationship. And it was also like new for me because I didn't know. I didn't know how to like boys. I didn't know how to like talk to guys. I was the most awkward person when it came to talking to guys, like genuinely. And of course you're like, you know, it's like your high school love and like no one really knows like how to date in high school. So it was just pretty cheesy. So anyway, like I said, I'm walking with the Lord, trying my best. I was going to one church at this time. And this one church that I went to, I did not fit in. Like I said, no one talked to me. No one talked to me and my sisters. We felt like such outcasts. And again, like I said, that really fed into this, like, I want to be liked and known from a very young age because no one talked to us. I kid you not. So we stuck together and my sisters became my best friends because of that, because no one talked to us. Um, We clung together. And that was kind of always like the reoccurring thing, unfortunately. So I went to this one church. I didn't really like it because I don't feel like it really made an impact on me. I didn't feel like I fit in. I felt like everyone had a friend there, but me and my sisters. And so my brother one time was like, screw this church. Not really, but he was like, I want to find something better. My older brother, he dipped out and went to a new church and he brings me and my sisters to this other church. And one time we went with him and I was like, okay, this is kind of different. It's kind of weird because this is the, was a very charismatic church. I mean, praying in tongues, healings, you know, I've been seeing, I've, I've saw some of the crazy things at this church, which I'll get into, but my brother goes to this church and there's this camp coming up called Youth for the nations at Christ for the nations church. And at this time, like I said, I wasn't really walking with the Lord. I knew right or wrong, but I didn't really have like a deep, intimate relationship with God. So my brother is like, Hey, there's this church camp coming up that I, I want you and Angel and Vanya to, to go with me, my, my two older sisters. And I didn't really want to go, to be honest. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going to be there. I don't like the idea of church camp, strangers. I'm good. I was like, I'm not doing it. But then my brother was like, no, like, please come. And I didn't make money. Like in high school, I didn't really work besides babysitting. And I was like, I don't have money. And my parents didn't really have either money to afford us going to this camp. So I made up an excuse. and I was like, nope, not going, don't have money. And he was like, well, what if the youth pastor paid for you to go? And I was like, dang it. I don't want to go. But then I felt like I had no excuse because I was like, well, now I can't get out of it because, you know, it's being paid for. And the youth pastor like begged. He was like, please, like, let me pay for you. I promise you it'll be good. So I was like, fine. So I went. I show up to this camp. It's like a six to nine, six day camp. People from all over the United States. I mean, an incredible place. Like it's called Youth for the Nation. So multicultural place, people all over from the world, even there too. It was really cool. A thousand plus people. So I show up, it's in the peak of summer. It's freaking hot. I'm dripping in sweat. I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? Pack my bag and it's a six, six day camp, like I said. So every single night they have like a worship night or like a healing night or someone comes to speak. So I go to the first night. I walk in this massive freaking room. There's flags all over the room. Like I said, it's a multicultural um, church. It's, co- it's called Christ for the Nations for a reason. So the first service starts and Jesus Culture, which is a very well-known band now, but at the time I had no idea who they were. Jesus Culture is leading worship. And their worship begins and it's very spirit-filled and people are clapping and raising their hands and it's very powerful and people are jumping. And I was like, this is new. Like, what is this? I'd never experienced that really before. Now, I had grown up in a very charismatic home where I knew that stuff was real. Like, my parents had brought us to churches like that growing up. But to myself, for there to be only people my age around me doing the same thing, that was kind of new because the previous church I'd been going to was not that at all. The worship ends, someone speaks on stage. It was really good. And at the very end, they're like, we're going to go back into doing praise and worship in an altar call. And at this time in my life, I think I'm about 14 years old. I had this secret little addiction that I didn't want anyone to know about because I thought everyone would judge me. And I thought everyone would think you're crazy. So the service is happening and I am feeling all sorts of new ways. I mean, I'm feeling the presence of God. I'm feeling like, wow, what is this place? This is so free. This is incredible. 
and worship is going back on. Jesus culture is there. Jesus culture is singing this incredible song. And I just started experiencing this new feeling for, for the first time in my life. I just started feeling like the presence of God and my body is like tingling and I'm just, I'm raising my hands and I'm crying. And I was like, what is happening? So the pastor goes up on stage and he's like, I feel like we need to do an altar call. And if you don't know what an altar call is, it's basically like they call you forward to the front to either get praying for something, healing for something. You can confess. Like there's all sorts of things, but basically it's like coming to the front and getting someone to pray for you. So he says, I feel like there's some people carrying some things that they've been holding on for very, a very, very long time. And I want you to come down to the front and open up about this and confess this to someone. If this is you, if you've been carrying something for way too long and it's enslaving you and you're ashamed and you're feeling nervous, this is for you come down to the front. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I start like sweating palms, a sweaty baby. I mean, hearts racing. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling like this? And I knew it was the Lord being like, go forward because you have been carrying this thing for way too long. So I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I, I, I can't go down. I don't want anyone to know. I don't want anyone to see me walk down. What if they judge me? And I'm looking around and I'm in this big youth group. It's like a group of like, probably like 60 people at this youth group that were all there. And I'm like, well, no one else is going down. So why would I be the first to go down? I'm so nervous. And then again, my heart starts rating, racing faster and faster and faster. Boom, 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 boom. Sweating more. And I'm like, okay. All right, fine. I'm like, I'll go down. So I start breaking out of the crowd. I'm like running through the pews and I'm like pushing people in a nice way. Of course, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And I'm like, I run down to the front because I just knew the Lord was like, go, I'm calling you. So I get down to the front. I go up to this girl and she's like, what do you need help with? What, what can I pray for you for? And I just started getting so nervous. I didn't want to say it out loud. I didn't want to say it out loud, but I knew I had to. And I said, I've been struggling with an addiction to masturbation and porn. Newsflash. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my podcast. So I had never confessed that to anyone at that time. And I was young. And unfortunately, when I was like about 12 or 13 or something, I was exposed to porn and not a way that I ever, it was never self-induced. I was with some friends and we were flipping through the TV channels at a hotel one time and porn came on the TV and it would just flashed on the screen. And we were, we all literally started screaming. We we're like, oh my God, we we're like, what was that? I had never got the birds and beads talk. Thanks, mom and dad. So I didn't know what that was. Genuinely, I was like, what was that? And my friend was like, that's how babies are made. And I was like, that? That's how, and I freaked out. Like, I literally was like, Ugh. like, I, I couldn't even. I was like, that's how babies are made. I panicked. So I was exposed to that at a very young age. But then it opened up this whole curiosity in me. I was like, what was that? So I started watching porn at a very young age. And it like awoke this like very sexual part of me that I wasn't proud of. And I think the music that I was listening to and that, and like I was secretly watching it and then I started masturbating and I didn't know like why I was doing it, but I just did it. And I was so ashamed every single time I'd be like, oh my God, am I going to hell? Am I going to hell? And I would repent and I'd be like, God save me. I'm so sorry. And I would do the salvation prayer 20 different times in my bathroom. And I'd be like, God, I'm sorry. Because I thought if I watched it, I would go to hell like instantly. And I didn't understand God's grace. I didn't understand redemption. I didn't understand, you know, just the gospel at that, I guess. So I finally tell this woman and I'm like, I've been watching porn and I'm so ashamed and I don't know, I don't want to do this. And I, I, I'm so like upset with myself and I feel enslaved to this. And so she's just like, it's okay. It's okay. She's like, she puts her hands on me. She's like, we're going to, we're going to pray for this right now. And I like close my eyes and I put my hands out and I start praying. And it was just like the spirit, the Holy spirit just came over me. I'm shaking and my hands are shaking and I'm sweating. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm sorry. I start tearing up and I'm sobbing and I encountered the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, I genuinely, genuinely would say I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I began to shake and I was crying and I was just repented for, repented for what I was doing. And I was just like, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And once she prayed over me, it was like this moment just like overwhelmed me of just like, like the weight was lifted off of me and I felt so free. And I was like, yes, thank you, Lord. And I began to just weep and I just felt the presence of God so strong on me at that very moment. And I was set free from porn and masturbation. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Like it's crazy. And I know that's not everyone's testimony. That's not everyone's story. But for me, that was my story that, that God literally took it from me in that moment. It's like he broke off an addiction from me in that moment. And I wept and I was just like, whoa. And when you encounter the presence of God like that, it is so real. It is so tangible that I was just like, I will never be the same. And I wasn't, I encountered it. And I was like, thank you, Lord. So I felt set free. I remember going to someone and telling them like, I struggle with this and I don't struggle with it anymore. Yay. And it turns out I opened up about it to to some other girls. And suddenly so many of the girls were like, oh my gosh, I struggle with that too. Which is why I've talked about that in other podcasts, because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with that. I know people think that only guys struggle with it. Er, False girls do too. I think it's actually becoming more accepted now. And I'm here to say like, If you're struggling with it, there's freedom in it. It's not what God intended. I promise you, you don't have to be shameful for the rest of your life. There is freedom in that. I promise you. So confession and confession can help you in that just as a side note. So anyway, that was high school. I left the other church, started going to this other church. We went every single week. We formed a family. I was in the church consistently. I was a good girl. I was still dating this boyfriend. We broke up on and off in high school. That's a different story. And I walked consistently with the Lord in high school and it was really powerful. I was very thankful. God saved me, changed my life for the better. So then college rolls around. Oh, college. (laughs) So my freshman year of college, I went to this college called Southern Methodist University. I was on a deferred program there, became a college cheerleader, was still a good girl for the most part. I was now doing long distance with my high school boyfriend. He went to a school in Illinois. I was at SMU. I was still doing college cheerleading and he was doing college football. And so I didn't like this school. I didn't feel like I fit in. Again, I remember still feeling like I don't fit in here. I don't have money like these people. I don't look like them. I don't dress like them. I don't talk like them. I was just like, I will never fit in. But I wanted to so badly, like I just did. And I remember being at that college and people inviting me to fraternity parties and to go out. And I never did because my high school boyfriend protected me from that. Actually, he was like, no, it's not going to be good for you. Don't do it. So thank you to him. And so I didn't. And that was all my freshman year. I was still living with my parents and that was great. So then sophomore year rolls around and I realized I didn't want to go to to SMU anymore. He transferred to UT. My childhood best friend was at UT. Uh, My two sisters were at UT. A high school friend that I I knew from high school, obviously, she was going to UT and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to UT. Applied the last day possible. University of Texas at Austin, for those that are curious. And I applied the last day possible. And by the grace of God, I got in. And what's kind of crazy is that because I didn't grow up with a lot of money, I always worried, how will I ever go to college? And I genuinely never, ever, ever thought college was possible. I really didn't. I was so, I accepted the fact that college wouldn't be in the cards for me because of lack of funds. And I never thought I was smart enough. I was like, with my high school experience was being homeschooled. I was like, I'll never get into a school. And like, I always just had so many insecurities around that because all my friends in high school would be like, I'm going to AM, I'm going to Baylor. I'm going to be like, what are you doing, Janine? And I'd be like, uh, like I literally didn't think I would ever go truly. And so with the help of financial aid and scholarships and just believing in myself and just setting my mind to doing it and my mom's help, I did it. And some of my friends, parents helps help. I did that. And so maybe you're in that boat. Maybe you were like, I'll never go to college. And that's okay if you need to go to community college. I did it too. But just believe that you can do it and all things are possible if you set your mind to it. There's financial aid, there's scholarships, and you can do it, you guys, I promise you. But I will say something that's pretty interesting is that because we didn't grow up with that much money, all of us had this mentality of like, all right, we got to work because we didn't have money to fall back onto. And so a lot of us picked up jobs, my siblings and I all picked up very random jobs to try to find ways to make money and save money. And so I nannied, I babysat, I did all these random jobs. I worked at this, I worked as a graphic designer's assistant in high school. And I also did promo jobs where like, basically like if you went to a convention, I was the girl handing out pamphlets. I was like, hello, sign up to win this survey or whatever, this giveaway. So we always worked hard. So I just knew like, okay, if I work hard enough, I can get into this school. And I'm so thankful because UT was my dream school as a kid. And I never thought I would get into it because my childhood best friend would always talk about UT and in the back of my mind, I'd always be like, yep, that'll never happen to me. And my siblings would all say the same thing, to be honest, but thank the Lord we did it. And two of my other, actually two of my siblings also went to SMU, which was really cool. So I go to UT, right? And this school is literally 
50,000 students, 50,000. And that was massively different from my upbringing. I mean, my graduating class in high school was 34. So it was a wide wake up call. I mean, super different. So I'm going from like small town, not small town, small, like little school to this massive school where suddenly I felt like this little fish in a big pond. And I was just like, what is this? And I was so excited. And I was still dating my high school boyfriend at this time. And I I had my high school friend there and my sisters. And it was so fun. I was like, yay, college, right? But then all of a sudden, I just felt like I was looking around again. And I was like, I don't belong here. And my identity issues just kept growing massively because I was like, I want to be in a sorority. And I knew I didn't have the funds to be in a sorority. I didn't have, you know, the appearance that typically a sorority at UT would have. And Panhellenic was massive at UT. And so I was like, that'll never be me. I'll never fit in. And so in my sophomore year, I shortly broke up with my high school boyfriend. I realized that we weren't going to get married. So we broke up and I went into my single life. And then I soon found a college competitive cheer group. And like I said, I'd been doing cheer. So I was like, I want to continue to cheerleading. So I joined that and I was in that. And so by joining that cheerleading group, it was like the best thing ever. I absolutely loved it. By joining that and doing the tryouts, I met actually my now best friend, Sarah Penny, but um, she didn't make the team. So that's fine. But I met other girls on this cheer team that were not believers. And so because of this, I started surrounding myself with non-believers. And I didn't realize at the time how important who you surround yourself with is. Because because of these girls, they weren't believers. They started going out and they were partying and they were doing things and they were hooking up with guys and whatever, which I never did. But they were like, do you want to come out with us? Do you want to come to this party? And we all became very close. And I didn't have any other friends. It was very, very difficult. I thought it'd be so much easier to to find friends in college. It was not. So I'm struggling. Like, I'm like, I just want to make friends. I want to be loved. I want to be accepted. I thought college would be so perfectly smooth and it just wasn't. It really wasn't. It was really difficult. And I just didn't like myself half the time. I was really like at times disappointed that I didn't look like everyone else. that I didn't have money like everyone else and that I just didn't fit in. And so I just really wanted to change myself. And so because of that, I did anything I could to fit in. And so if they said, let's go party, I was like, well, you know what? If that's what it means to be accepted and to be cool, I'm going to go party. And so every now and then I wasn't like a crazy, crazy partier, but for a good bit of college, I would start to go out, started partying and started going to these like frat parties and started going out to the bars. And it was just, it wasn't good, but I didn't think it was that bad because I was like, well, I've never done this before. And this is so new because I never had drank before this at all. And so started going out a ton and hanging out with these girls and, you know, they're cussing. And so I start cussing. And even though like all of college, like I, I brought my Bible with me to college. I knew I needed to be plugged into a church. I just, it was like, it just didn't interest me. I was like, I don't really want to be a part of that because I think that's kind of boring. And I'm sick of being the, the ostracized weirdo. Like I've been my whole life. It's like, I never wanted to tell anyone at college that I was homeschooled because I was so embarrassed of that label because obviously that's like looked down upon or you're seen as a weirdo or a loser for being homeschooled. So I was like, I want to be nothing but that. So whatever is possible for me to look cool and trendy and fun, I'm going to do that. So I started partying and dressing differently and listening to different music and, and cussing more. And I just started looking like everyone else and basically forgot about my faith. My sisters would I wasn't living with my sister, so they'd be going to church and they would, they were dating their high school, college sweethearts, and they were set in their ways with, you know, following the Lord. And I just was like, yeah, I don't really want to do that because I thought Janine knew better. I thought I was so happy and I was thriving and I was not, I really wasn't. So college was just really bad for me, to be honest. I was partying a ton and I got into a very toxic, unhealthy relationship with this guy that I dated for two and a half years. And I've opened up about that in the past and I'll get into that later down the road, but I got into a very unhealthy relationship in college that really was difficult for me. I ended up losing my virginity to this man, which is something I I regret it, even though I know it's a part of my story. It's something that I still am like, dang, if I could go back in time, I would change that, but you can't now. So it's like, whatever, but it's a part of my story because now I know what it's like to have lost it. I apologize for the interruptions. If you're watching the YouTube video, My camera has been doing this thing lately where it just stops recording and it deletes the footage, which is just really annoying. So I'm sorry for watching the YouTube video. It might um, have the footage go out for a little bit. But anyway, so what I was trying to talk about 
is um, college was just a little bit of a rough time for me. And in my senior year of college, I was living alone. This is when my YouTube channel was starting to take off because I became a YouTuber first. I started in high school and then in YouTube, in college, it really took off. I mean, it was like, I felt like I was like college, college student by day, YouTuber by night, because at night I was like filming all the videos and editing them and all the things. And so, um, YouTube played a very big part of my college because I decided to not, um, not like get internships or anything because I knew I wanted to do YouTube in college. I was a radio television film major and a business minor. And I always thought I wanted to do TV broadcasting or, um, just like special effects editing or something. Like I just knew I wanted to work within media, which is kind of what I'm doing now, which is really awesome. So anyway, college was just kind of rough and I was still trying to like walk with the Lord, but it was kind of like, I just wanted to go do my own thing. I wanted to taste the world and I did that. And I, that didn't leave me in very many good places to be honest. And so I think looking back now, it's like, I, I wish I had just stuck to going to church consistently. And I wish I stuck with what my sisters had kind of told me. And I wish I had found better friends, but I did join a Christian sorority at one point and I joined that. But then I do feel like even at that time, because I wanted to fit in so badly, that Christian sorority was looked down upon. It was like, you didn't want to be a phylum girl because a phylum girl was kind of seen as being tacky or the dorky sorority. And so I felt like even then I was like, dang, even though I'm in this sorority, I still don't feel like I fit in. And so like my deep insecurities and my lack of identity just really caused me to just grasp anywhere in any place for like security and identity and people to like me. And I just remember walking around campus a lot of the times, just like looking down at the ground being like, I don't fit in here. And like, I don't like myself. And like, I wish I didn't look like this. And it's just really sad. Like, I don't think that way at all now, but growing up, I definitely feel like I did, which is just really, really sad. And so Um, like I said, I was dating someone for a while. We, you know, I had lost my virginity to him. It was something I never intended because I always wanted to wait till marriage. I really did. That was always like my goal and my dream. And I dated him for such a long time and, you know, it just happened. And it was something that was really difficult for me. And I was pretty sad. And I mean, I don't think that it's like the end of the world. I've talked about that, but I also think it's something I really wanted, but, um, that, because of that happening, that led to a lot of problems and a lot of things in our relationship and him kind of manipulating me in certain ways and kind of telling me, you know, like, I just think a girl, like I'm trying to figure out how to say this, him basically equating a woman's worth to her virginity and me believing that as well. Me believing if I wasn't a virgin or if I didn't wait till marriage, that I would be seen as less valuable or that a man wouldn't want me because those were things that he had told me. And me being naive and immature and lack of identity and finding security into a person at that time when I shouldn't have, it should have been in Christ, I believed the things that he had told me. And so I won't get too much into that relationship, but essentially that was a pretty traumatic time in my life. Um, it ended really, really poorly, led to some very unwise decisions and poor decisions and just a lot of trauma in my life that I had to get healing for and counseling. And it was just very, very difficult. And one day I will open up, open up more about that, but I will leave it at that for now. Of just knowing that that was a really big part of my story that really messed me up in a lot of ways. And so all that to say, college was just not my favorite time. As much as I loved college, I loved my college in general. And I still think it can be beneficial and a good time for some people. Most of the time, College is a pretty difficult time for a lot of people. It's where you're really trying to figure out yourself and figure out who you are and what you want and what you want to do. And it's like setting up a pathway for the rest of your life. And it was just really difficult. And even though, like I said, I was trying to go to church and I was still trying to walk with the Lord, I was just so confused. And it had, my sisters had graduated. All my friends had graduated. My friend that I was was living with that was from high school, she ended up dropping out of college. And so I didn't have anyone around me genuinely making me like look more like Jesus. And I didn't know that I needed that that badly, but looking back now, I'm like, yeah, that's really, really important. And shortly after being in my Christian sorority, I dropped out a semester because I was like, I'm going to do full-time YouTube. And so I had to decide where I was going to spend my time. And I picked school and my relationship in a sorority. I mean, sorry, YouTube. I dropped the sorority and cheerleading. So anyway, I graduate college and I'm still trying to heal from this pretty traumatic relationship. It was an abusive, manipulative relationship that was very unhealthy and toxic. And I moved back to Dallas after college. I was living in uh, Dallas again with two other girls or three other girls in this really 
awesome house and it was these two other bloggers and it was really cool. And I did that for a year, but even that whole year, it was like me just trying to figure out who is Janine? What is faith? What do, what do I do now? And I was like, okay, I'm going to try to get back into, um, figuring out my relationship with God. And so I was going to church. I was going to the porch. I was reading my Bibles, listening to sermons and was really trying to refigure out my faith because I knew I had walked away from it. Even though I was trying, I knew I walked away from, I knew I wasn't following the Lord. And so even though I was trying to do that, I was still very unhealthy. I wasn't healed. I didn't, I needed to go to therapy. I did later, but I needed to go to therapy and I didn't. And so my unhealed wounds and things manifested again in more unhealthy ways. It looked in the form of me still going out and partying sometimes and being around unhealthy people. And even though I would go to church, I would still try to figure that out with the Lord. I still was in half with the world and half with God. And I was still dabbling with partying every now and then. I wanted men to like me. I wanted to be seen as normal. I wanted to be accepted. And so I just still did not know who Janine was in the Lord. So that was like most of 2017, which was really hard. It was like, I was trying my best to figure out myself. And this is the year I'd really gotten into fitness. And I was living in Dallas back around my parents again, but I was just still living a pretty double life to say the least. So in 2018, I had some friends move out to LA and they really wanted me to move out to LA. And at this time, this was peak YouTube. Everyone, every YouTuber was moving out to LA. And it was like when you could do collabs and you were going to all the Hollywood things and the shows and the um, events and the blogger things and the YouTube trips. I mean, this was like peak YouTube era, right? And if you remember watching my YouTube videos, that was like me, like that was me at that time. And my YouTube channel was growing super fast and I hit a million subscribers and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And it was my end all be all. I put all my security and all my worth into being a YouTuber everything. So I moved out to LA because I had a friend tell me to go there. And so I prayed about it and I thought about it, I asked my parents, I was like, what do you think? And they were like, okay, I think we surrender you to the Lord. We just hope and pray that you make good decisions out there when you are out there. And the whole, the whole year of 2017, I had already been dabbling between California and New York. And I kept going to California. I went almost every single month for events and for work. And then also my best friend, Penny had moved there from college. And so I was like, you know what? I think I should move to LA. So finally I was like, I'm doing it. So 2018 I packed up, moved in January and moved in with some other YouTubers. And it was really fun, which that ended up ended pretty poorly in some ways. And so, um, even that year it was like, I was starry eyed. I moved to LA. I was super excited going to the Hollywood, Hollywood parties. And I was being recruited to be on shows and auditions. And I was doing TV hosting and some acting gigs. And it was like, to me, it was like my dream. It was like, yay, I have made it. I'm doing it. But at the same time, I was so confused and so lost. And I hadn't figured out my relationship with the Lord still. And so throw that into, you know, not having your relationship figured out with God admits making money and having followers and status and people knowing who you are, traveling, being in the midst of Hollywood, which is, you know, the place that wants to change you kind of. And everyone wants to tell you how to look and how to dress and what to eat. And so I caved into all of that because I just wanted, again, to be liked. I wanted to fit in. And so I would do anything to do that. I would eat a certain way. I would dress a certain way. I would buy certain things. And I thought I had to buy flashy cars and nice designer bags. And I just caved into that because I was like, I want to fit in. And again, a lack of identity. Everything stems from that pretty much. And so shortly into that year, um, in October of 2018, I got invited to this party and I was expecting it was going to be like a party. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to go to this party. And I was so excited because I was still kind of partying a little bit still this year because that's what everyone did in YouTube and everyone did in that era and everyone did in LA was just party. And I'm really glad I never dabbled in anything else, but I just drank. And so I knew that I was like, around this time, I was like, something's got to change. Like, I am not happy with my life. I'm not happy with who I am. I don't like myself. And I was just like trying to figure out how do I be a Christian? Like, how do I do this? And I finally eventually found the peace. So in October of 2018, I got invited to this party, like I said, and I was going to this church kind of off and on. It was called Vintage Church in Santa Monica, where I lived. And I went up to this girl and she's like, oh, what's your name? And I was like, my name's Janine. And I was like, she's like, oh, do you have a church around here? And I was like, yeah, I go to Vintage Church. And she's like, no way, so do I. And it was a tiny church. And I was like, how come I never seen you before? And she was like, how come I never seen you? And she was like, are you in a Bible study? And I was like, no. And at this time, 
was when I was wanting to make a change in my life. And I was like, God, I know I need friends. Like, help me. And I said, I told God, I said, God, either you are going to please bring me a community group or I'm going to have to fit, make one myself. Like, at this point, I was beginning to get desperate because I knew I needed a change in my life. Because here's the thing. The Holy Spirit is always pinging you. He's always calling you back. He's always like, I know, I know you're far away from me. I'm going to give you your free will, but I'm still pinging you. And it was like the Holy Spirit was always tapping my shoulder, like, come back, come back, come back. So I was like, all right. So this girl invited me to this Bible study and she was like, hey, it's every Tuesday you should come. And I was like, okay, I'll go. And so I showed up to this Bible study one time and I saw all these incredible women. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And there was this mentor and she was our Bible study leader. She was a counselor. She was this incredible woman named Casey. And she starts teaching us the Bible. She starts with the book of Luke and she's literally breaking it down scripture by scripture, explaining how everything, you know, is cohesive and how it works and what this means and what Jesus did and how this applies to our life. And it felt like I was like a child again, just like soaking up this information. And it was just so powerful. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And I became hooked. And I knew in my spirit, I was like, this is what I have been looking for. This is what my soul has been longing for was this. So I started going consistently every single Tuesday, soaking it up the scripture. And all of a sudden it was like, I wanted to read the scripture again. I wanted to go to church. I suddenly had women asking me, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? How can I pray for you? I hadn't had that much before. I really had it. And so I finally got to see what does it look like? to have community? What does it look like to be held accountable? What does it look like to have women call you higher and challenge you and speak into your life and know the struggles and the sins that you have? And so it was powerful. So after months and months and months of going to that, I started seeing myself slowly but surely change and become more free and look more like Christ. And I remember one time there was a girl in the Bible study. She was going through something really tough in her life and she had met with Casey for counseling and she sat up front and she was like, Hey, if anyone is going through anything, I really want to encourage you meet with Casey. I know it may seem scary. I know there's a negative stigma around the word counseling, but I encourage you meet with Casey. She set me free. She helped me. Please consider it. And it was that same feeling I had in high school when my heart started pounding and I was like, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, okay. And I knew that was the Holy Spirit pinging me. You need to go see Casey. And I was like, you're right. So I texted Casey and I was like, Casey, I need to meet with you. I've had a lot of difficulties in childhood and this past relationship that was traumatizing for me. College was difficult. I just feel like I need to talk to you. And so she's like, okay, meet with me every single Wednesday. So I started meeting with Casey and I'm still having accountability and all these awesome girls. I'm going to church regularly. And I just felt like I needed to confess um, something to someone. I needed someone older to speak into the things that I was struggling with. And so slowly but surely, Casey and I continue to meet and she starts calling me out on so many things, things that I didn't even know I needed to be called out on, but like things that challenged me and called me higher. And I was so glad she called me out on. We met every single Wednesday and she would pray over me and we would talk about things that were difficult in my childhood. We talked about my college experience. She opened up reasons of why I was doing what I was doing, why I was partying, why I was dressing that way, why I got into that toxic relationship. And so it was the most beneficial, freeing thing that I ever did because suddenly I knew why I was doing what I was doing and what was going wrong and how to fix it. And she would pray over me and I would weep and I would cry and I would feel so much more set free. And she would check up on me and she'd be like, how are you doing in this? How is that going for you? And I was so thankful because she told me, you are living a double life. Janine, I need you to choose God. No one's going to babysit you in your faith. And she was right. It was like I was expecting someone to like carry me along and babysit me in my faith. But she was like, you have got to choose God for yourself. And from that day forward, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I am going to choose God for my own. And that might be the same thing that you need to do in your story. So I used to be hanging out with this crew that partied all the time. And I said, you know what? I'm ditching them. I stopped hanging out with them. I stopped going to the places that constantly tempted me and I, I ditched it. I completely changed my ways. I slowly but surely started finding Christian community and hanging out with godly people, women of God, like godly men. It was like my life flipped upside down. And to be honest, it was all because I met this one guy 
when I lived in California, I was dating this guy and he introduced me to all these people. I, I met some of my best friends still to this day that will be in my wedding. He introduced me to these girls and then from there, I met other people. And I, even though him and I broke up, and that ended in a pretty difficult, sad way, um, I met the most incredible people through him. And it was like the most amazing thing. And so these people introduced me to other people and other people. And so my faith continued to grow. And then the pandemic hit. And so I'm sitting alone in my apartment for two years. I lived alone. And I finally learned what does it mean to like abide in Jesus, sit with Jesus, worship Jesus. And so I now have godly people around me. I'm listening to worship music. I'm journaling daily. I'm reading the Bible daily. People are pouring into me. I'm pouring into other people. I finally felt like I was like consistently walking with the Lord. Praise God. And the Lord was speaking to me. He was refining me. There were so many things I needed to be refined of still. And that past relationship ended in a very unfortunate way. And that caused a lot of heartbreak in my life again. So I was going through that and dealing with that heartbreak. It was very difficult. If you watch my YouTube channel at this time, you remember that. And that ended in a pretty difficult way. And that was something that was pretty disappointing for me because again, this was this man kind of attacked my character and attacked my identity and held my past over my head. And so again, it was like trying to re-navigate those things of like, do I believe what God says I am or, do my, or am I going to let this man tell me who I am? And so navigating through that and going to counseling through that again, but then slowly but surely I began to feel more free and like I rededicated my life to the Lord. And I was like, I genuinely feel like I understand the gospel now. I understand the word of God. And so for me, it was like a gradual thing. It really was. It was like the Lord just kept slowly but surely taking over my heart. And again, the way that I was, up, I, was uh, I was raised and brought up came back into fruition. I'm thankful that my parents did that over me because the Bible says that the word does not return void. And so I believe the way that my parents raised me did not return void. It, it ended up working in my life again. And I'm super thankful because it did come back out as an adult. And so I ended up getting rebaptized. I went to this trip. I went to Israel with some friends and there's a whole other story to that, but it was like the most amazing, incredible trip. And this was when I was still trying to refigure out my faith a little bit, but I ended up getting rebaptized because there was when I was like, you know what? I am doing this. I am going to serve Jesus for the rest of my life. And I got baptized in the same river that Jesus himself got baptized in the Jordan River. It was the most incredible, amazing thing. I like bawled my eyes out. It was so powerful. I'm so thankful for that. I just could like cry thinking about it because it was just like this amazing moment in my life when I finally just was like, Jesus, I choose you. I see the ways that you bring me life and every single thing that I thought would bring me life in Hollywood, in this career and money and fame and glory and boys and whatever, like it never satisfied. It never did. Jesus at the end of the day was the only thing that truly satisfied me. It was amazing. So I got baptized. And then from there, I just started faithfully walking with the Lord. And I want to just tell you that who you surround yourself with is who you will become. People are going to be staple in your life and in your journey of knowing Jesus. You need people to run alongside you in, in conjunction with you so that you can faithfully serve God. I promise you it is absolutely make or break. So I joined a church. I was in this small group. I was meeting with people regularly, completely switched my friend group, was only hanging out with Christians that spurred me onto my faith and prayed for me. And it was absolutely life-changing. And then all of a sudden it was like my whole career had flipped upside down because I was originally talking only about like beauty and fashion and lifestyle and fitness and all these things. And then all of a sudden I started incorporating my faith into my channel 10 times more, which I'm so thankful for because it was to me like, I can't shut up about this. Like I want to share my faith for the rest of my life. And so I almost kind of became this like quote unquote Christian influencer, which, which is what people call me now, I guess you could say. And started sharing my faith and doing Bible challenges and leading Bible studies on Zoom during the pandemic and started this thing called the Abide Tribe. And I helped other women find Christian community. And then next thing I knew, I was being flown out to Christian events and Christian conferences and people were asking me to speak. And it was like, whoa, my life like completely flipped upside down. Like I never asked for any of it, but it was like, because the Lord changed me and he started pruning me, then he was like, I'm going to prepare you for something bigger your platform and your purpose. He prepared me, but it took so much pruning and me having to shed my old ways and confess things. And after doing that, it was like, God was like, all right, 
I've seen you be faithful with little. I'm going to give you much more now. And so my journey was not easy. It was not like this, like overnight, like, yay. Like it took a lot of tears and sacrifice and confession and prayer and wrestling with God of like, God, what is this all about? Why am I doing this? And still being tempted with old ways and still to this day being tempted with old ways, but knowing now that Jesus's ways bring life genuinely. So anyway, after that, I'm walking faithfully with the Lord. I moved back to Dallas because I realized there was nothing left for me in California. I realized that my season was done there, that I had had a great faithful season, that God used California in the most incredible staple way to change my life. I am forever grateful. My best friends still live there. Every time I go back, I'm like, thank you God for LA. Like, even though I wouldn't necessarily move back, it was the most staple part of my story. It's where I found Christ. I found believers, found healing, found freedom. And so I'm genuinely so thankful for that, truly. So in 2021, I moved back to Dallas. I moved in with my best friend, Maddie, and she was a big part of my story as well. We were doing full-time influencing together and then full-time, you know, Christian influencing kind of happened and she's writing a book and I'm speaking more at churches now and I'm still doing Bible studies and I'm sharing my faith and I start this podcast and life just began to like, just like unfold in the best way possible. And it is so true. Like as you walk with Jesus, it doesn't mean you won't suffer a meal still. It doesn't mean you won't have struggles and heartbreaks and whatever. Like I went through another breakup after that. And so it doesn't mean that you won't go through hard things, but man, you have an anchor to do it with. Now you have a hope for your soul. Like even though there was hard things in my life, it was like, I always knew Jesus would be there right with me leading me and guiding me. And so I moved back to Dallas and I joined a church and I was with other believers and I was meeting all these amazing people and doing life with Maddie, like my best friend was the most amazing thing. The way we spurred each other on and refined each other. I learned so much from her, so, so much. And she learned things from me too. And so it just goes to show like believers will always be staple in your journey, always. And so it kind of leads me to this point of where I am now, of like now living alone and still walking with the Lord and having a podcast and being a full-time Christian influencer and writing and speaking and doing all these things and sharing my faith and wanting to help people because you guys, like there's a lot of things that people reach out to me and they struggle with, whether it's an addiction or identity or feeling like they don't fit in or money struggles or like they'll never be good enough or body image or heartbreak, toxic relationships. Like there's so many things in my story that I wouldn't have chosen for myself. However, I see that God has used it. And now I see that all those things were preparation to be able to help set other people free, to be able to speak into people's stories and say, I know what that's like. I know how you feel. I understand you. And so I, I see how God has used my story. Nothing is wasted. And I praise God because Without God, there's no way I would have been able to overcome this stuff. It would have been, it would have taken me a lot longer. I would have fallen short 10 times more. Maybe would have went back to it. Would have taken me a lot longer to heal because I would have thought that maybe manifestation or crystals or something else would have solved my problems. When in reality, it was Jesus. Jesus is what set me free and saved me genuinely. And that's why I owe everything, my life, my platforms, my money, my, my everything that I do my home, my friendships. I'm like glory to God because he saved me and set me free. And that's why I want to do everything for him because he is worth it. And so my journey has not been perfect. I went through so many things in my life that were very difficult. College was rough. That relationship was rough. I mean, whatever. But I just believe that, that God ordained every single little thing. I can look back at my story and I'm like, oh, God did that. And he was there also. And he, he set that up and he brought this person into my life and that prayer wasn't wasted. And even though I didn't see the results right away, two years later, he, he made it come to fruition and come to pass. And so guys never cease to pray, never cease to believe, never cease to have faith because just because you don't see the results doesn't mean it's not happening. Just because you don't see the prayer immediately be, be gratified. It doesn't mean that it won't happen three years down the road, two years down the road. And so be faithful with him and trust God with your journey and your story. And I believe that sometimes there's things that we're carrying that we're like, I can never tell that to someone. But the longer you delay telling that to someone, the longer you stay enslaved in your sins and your secrets. So I want to encourage you to share your story with someone, confess your story with someone, because that is how you find freedom. You guys, 
nothing is impossible for God. I genuinely believe that. So there might be chains and things you're carrying and walking around with for years and years and years. And I believe that God wants to set you free. And I believe if you tell someone, a believer, a strong believer that's trusted, they can help you, have them pray over you. And maybe it'll take years for you to get whole or healthy or healed or whatever. Or maybe it'll happen in an instant like it did for me when I was in high school. But all I know is God is faithful and he will help you along the way. There's no temptation that will overcome you that is not known to God or known to man. And he will always provide a way out, always. So even if you don't overcome it instantaneously like I did, I still struggled with it, you guys. I still did. There were definitely times when there were still temptations, but I was always able to overcome it again by saying, God, help me, or confessing or telling someone, hey, I'm struggling again with the addiction of masturbation. Will you help me, please? So bring people into your struggles and bring it onto the light. When you live into the light, it's the best, healthiest thing you can ever do. I promise you. Because the enemy wants you to stay in darkness. He wants you to shut your mouth. He doesn't want you to share your story. He doesn't want me to share the story. There were so many things that went wrong today. I Like, seriously? And that's because I think the enemy was like, nope. I don't want you to share this story because he knows my story has the possibility and the power to set someone else free. So I want to just encourage you guys, like, I don't know what your story is. Maybe you've gone through things that are more difficult than me or less difficult. It doesn't matter. Your testimony is your testimony. That's the one thing that no one can take away from you. Someone can say, what happened to the dinosaurs? Was Jonah really in the belly of the, the, the belly of a whale? Like, what about this? What about that? That's fine. I may not have all the answers, but what I do know is I've seen that Jesus is real. I felt his presence. I've encountered him. I've seen him do miracles and healings and save people and save myself. And so I know he is real and he can save you too. And I pray that this podcast was an encouragement to you today, that you get to hear my story and just kind of like what God brought me through. And it wasn't easy. Like I, that's like, I haven't even shared all of it because I was trying to keep this kind of short, but there were times where I struggled. There were times when I was suicidal. There were times when I thought, what is this all for? There were times when I absolutely hated myself. I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, why did you make me this way? But now as, as I read the word and I believe in God and I trust in him and I know that he is my identity and my foundation, I say, God, thank you for making me this way. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am your handiwork. I'm your creation. I'm, I'm set up to do good works for you, God. And so I believe in who he says I am. I don't need others to tell me who I am. I don't need people to like me. I don't need someone to tell me, you know, I don't need someone to affirm me because God has already accepted me and affirmed me. And I want the same thing for you. And so I wish I could go back and hug high school me, middle school me, college me, and just give her a pep talk and just tell her what God would tell her and just tell her to believe the truths that God says. I wish I could tell her that. And so I don't know where you are on your journey. I know that some people go through more difficult things. And if that's you, I'm so sorry but I believe that God can redeem it and he can heal it and he can restore you and nothing is too far gone. And whatever you've done, whatever's in your story, whatever you may feel is it's too dirty or too broken or you, no one will ever love you if they've ever found out what you did. I just want to cast it off of you right now. That's not true. There's things in my life that I had to tell people that were so shameful and regretful and I'm like, no one's ever going to love me, but I promise you they loved me more and they welcomed me back even more. So share your story. God still loves you. You're not too far gone. He's always welcoming you home with arms wide open. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to heal you. Choose Jesus. Do not harden your heart. If you hear this word today, do not harden your heart and choose him. I promise you, I have tasted and seen the world and there's nothing out there good for me that will satisfy my soul the way that Jesus does. I promise you. So with everything that I do, my platforms, everything that I touch, I just want to say, God, use me. And just know that there's a preparation and a pruning process that is required for whatever that it is that you want to do. So maybe you're right now in the pruning stages and you're in the healing stages. That's okay. Let God refine you and, and sharpen you so that you can be ready and prepared for when he does call you to bigger things. To who much is given, much is required. So be able to steward what you're given right now, and then he will entrust you with more later on. So that is my story. And I know I might have brushed through some things. Of course, I can't share my entire life story in one podcast, but I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change my story, to be honest. I wouldn't because it has led me to where I am today. 
And now I can speak to situations that other people maybe can't speak to. Or if you are going through the things that I've walked through, I'm able to speak into that now because I know what it feels like. And I believe that nothing is wasted and that God wants to use your story, my story for his good. So I hope that this story was not, you know, misunderstood or that you don't judge my story or anyone else's story. Listen to people's stories and empathize and ask people questions and and be curious about people because you never know what someone's going through. You really, really don't. People might seem like they're so happy on social media or whatever, but everyone's going through something and everyone has a story. Everyone has a past or a childhood thing that led them to where they are today. And don't be afraid to ask for help. So that is my story. I hope this helps and that you guys now have a better understanding of who I am. And I just want to say thank you to my family and my parents and my friends that have helped me get to where I am today because I would never be who I am without them. Genuinely, I need people in my life and I still do. And you do too, because alone and being in isolation is where the enemy works. So don't suffer in isolation. Please bring people in. Please, please tell someone what you're going through and don't suffer alone and join a church, have believers around you that pray for you and call you out and walk with you through whatever it is that you're facing. And that is today's episode of happy and healthy. I genuinely am so happy and healthy in my life because I applied the word of God and other episodes that I've done where I've talked about healthy habits and things that I do. And so God is what has made me so joyful in my life and I praise him so much. So that's my story. Thank you guys for listening to today's episode. Let me know if this resonated with you in any way. You can share your story with me on my Instagram or the happy healthy Instagram. I would love to read your DMs or your voice memos or whatever. You can submit some down below. And, um, yeah, because of Jesus, I am the way I am. And I just praise him for that. And so a testimony is in order to get the testimony, sometimes you got to go through the test and I have been tested. And the thing is, as a Christian, you will still always be tested. So now when I go through tests, I know to run back to Jesus and he's my anchor and I have the scripture and I have the people around me and my family and prayer and fasting and all the things to help me get through it. So thank you guys for listening. That was today's episode. I love you all so much. Let me know your thoughts on the Happy Healthy Podcast as well as my Instagram where you can leave a voice memo. And I hope you guys enjoy learning more about me and my story. And I will be back again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, y'all. Bye.